Welcome back to a new video here with Life of the Bridges. This week we have got one of the most testing weeks and I say that all the time but it feels like it gets more and more testing but the tests that we've got have are the biggest tests yet because they're going to tell us whether Teddy has relapsed, he is having a bone marrow aspiration and a lumbar puncture and hopefully we'll get those results back within a couple of days to find out our fate, whether we'll be heading back to Great Ormond Street Hospital for a whole nother storm or whether there is some sort of clarity into why they found blasts in his spinal fluid. Keep everything crossed for us guys and uh, stick with us this week. Welcome back to our channel, Life with the Bridges. For those who don't know us, this is me, Scott. This is my wife, Katie, and this is our son, Super Ted. We are the Bridge family, trying to get the most out of this rat race we all call life. In September 2021, we found our dreams had come true. We were expecting a new addition to the Bridge family. We spent the next nine months, like any normal parents would, preparing our life for the arrival of our new baby boy. On the 11th of May 2022, at 11.11am, we were blessed with the birth of our son. He was perfect. We instantly felt love like we'd never experienced before, and our family of four we've always dreamed of was finally complete. We had the most magical first eight months with Teddy, experienced all that life had to offer. Then, on the 24th of February 2023, our whole world got turned upside down. We got told our nine month old son had been diagnosed with high risk AML leukemia. Do not take life for granted. We spent the next six months, 184 days to be exact, at Great Ormond Street Hospital. He endured two rounds of chemotherapy, a full bone marrow transplant, in hope that this would save our son's life. It was important to us that we documented every part of his journey to raise awareness and give childhood cancer the exposure it deserves. After riding the hellish and unpredictable storm, Teddy made it to the end of his treatment and rang that bell. You are joining us now in our next chapter of this journey at home at Bridge HQ as we try to rebuild our life and continue to spread awareness about what it's like to have a child post-cancer and transplant in hope that this second chance at life we have been given is forever. So if you're interested in following our journey, don't forget to like our videos, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell as we document our life as the Bridge family. Good morning, that is my clients done and we are heading to London Zoo today. This is something we've wanted to do for such a long time now. We have finally taken the plunge and heading up to London early as Teddy has his procedures tomorrow uh, early morning. So it will save the early morning get up and we get London Zoo out of it and we can tick that box of Teddy and he will absolutely love it because we all know how much Teddy loves his animals. So. But for now, I'm literally just going to shoot home, quickly get showered and dressed, and then we're in the car, packed up, and we are heading to London Zoo, and then going to check into our hotel a little bit later. So we arrived in London at London Zoo. First stop, meds. Hey, Ted, you ready to go and see some animals? What are we going to see? Going to see a giraffe? An elephant? A lion? A zebra? A mongoose? What? No I elephants in the zoo? I'll be fuming if there's no elephants. I've been practicing my trumpet for weeks. Very good passer there. Oh. I thought, I'm a bit closer. <laughs> thought I was merely just a glamorous assistant as always. Meds done, nappy done, off to London Zoo! What would you like to see first, Ted? What animal? A ruff. A ruff? She can try and find some giraffes. Yeah. Penguins! More. More what? Penguins? Yeah. Come on then. Penguins, you lucky boy, you got front row. Ma. 
<laughs> Here's one that is coming to see you. Why is it a parrot? Yeah. What noise does a parrot make? Squawk! Yeah. Wow, can you see the lion? Nothing like a good camera in the city with a goalpost behind. How authentic. And in the tiger enclosure. Is nothing but a crow. Brilliant. Let's hope there's a gorilla in here. There's not much else in London Zoo at the minute. <laughs> Another enclosure and no animals. It seemed like there was a trend to this London Zoo experience. The majority of the animals were tucked away out the way of the British weather. Annoying for us, but I can't say I blame them to be honest. Wake up! <laughs> so wake up! Although a lot of the animals were tucked away inside, it was all about Teddy and for him to see these animals in the flesh was absolutely incredible and blew his little mind. Baby. A baby giraffe. It's got to be the most British thing you'd ever see. An African zebra with a good English pigeon. This place has the potential to be absolutely fantastic, but unfortunately we've come here and every animal seems to either be non-existent or hiding. And so we haven't actually seen a lot, to be honest. Quite a few pigeons and magpies and crows, but <laughs> other than duck. that, oh yeah, the complimentary duck. But other than that, haven't seen a lot, but uh, we shall keep searching. We are finishing up here at London Zoo. Thank goodness the weather's been absolutely fine. But um, a lot of the animals weren't actually about, but we saw quite a few, so Teddy had a nice time. So um, another thing ticked off our list that we wanted to do with Teddy, but for now, we're gonna head back to the car, do his two o'clock meds, and then head to the hotel, and then see how we're gonna fill our evening. Ted, have we been absolutely stung by another gift shop? <laughs> you got a monkey. monkey. You got a monkey and some play toys. It's a really fluffy monkey, isn't it? Fluffy. No. Come on in, mate. Let's go back to the warm car. With some lovely memories made in London Zoo, we finally checked into our hotel for the evening. And they even gave us a complimentary cheeky upgrade, which was incredible. Yeah. Wow. Look at all this playroom. you got a bed each. Yay. Well, the room's lovely. But it is crazy the amount of stuff that we have to bring for one night. <laughs> Oh, phone call. Must be regarding the travel cop. Oh, this is better than Gosh. We love a free upgrade. Look at this. There's even a bloody telly in the bath. Right, all plans cancelled. We're staying in this room for the next 18 hours until we need to go to Great Ormondshire Hospital. You can take him for like half seven to Great Ormondshire and I'll meet you there about... Yeah, sure. Half you got your new animals. I saw all of those at the zoo, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, bless him. With our 25 overnight stay bags unpacked, we ventured downstairs to see what the hotel bar was like and enjoy a drink together. With our future unknown and all dictated by the test we were having tomorrow, these times were extremely precious. Do a good day tomorrow and good
Fingers crossed. Cheers. We found a local quiet restaurant to enjoy one more drink and soak up all of this normality. Obviously it had to be big enough for Teddy to get his daily baby shark practice in. So we just stopped off for a quick couple of drinks early and then we are heading back to the hotel now for some playing amongst all of the space that we have. I'm off to quickly pop to Tesco's because Teddy is only eating crisps at the minute, which is sounds awful, which it is, but any food is a bonus at the minute, so I'm just quickly trying to find a Tesco's or a, a local supermarket that actually does the one crisp that he eats, which is a McCoy paprika flavour, and um, just so we get some sort of solids in him. And then we are heading home to play and just go into the evening for a really, really chilled evening because we've got an early morning and more to the point, a really big day tomorrow. So, uh, yeah. Tesco's, then back home to the hotel. It feels super weird being out and about in London because this is kind of very, very close to the stomping ground that we stomped for six months around Great Ormishu Hospital and we are praying for good results from tomorrow's tests. Because if we get good results, we stay at home at Bridge HQ. If not, we are back up here to the surrounding area of London to attempt to save our boy's life again. Tomorrow's a huge day. Look at you, Daddy's just got your crispies, hasn't he? They're back in the hotel. Feed you up before your big, big procedures tomorrow. Who's this? And your monkey from the zoo, hey. You're gonna give a monkey a crispy? Oh, just one would be nice. Oh, that's really nice of you, Ted's. No, no, no. <laughs> Time to get you bathed. And then we're going to get you down for a big sleep. And then we're going to see Gosh tomorrow, hey? Yeah. Good boy. With Teddy all bathed, it was time for a bit more playing before bed. Yay! And apparently, I was the chosen toy. But unfortunately for Teddy, it seems like this horse had some wind. Hey, giddy up. Oh! With the horse exhausted and got rid of all his wind, it was time for some walking practice. Wow, good boy, Regan. Tired. You've done so well, mate. Yes. Well, You're brave. Yes, you are. Daddy. Mommy. Daddy. Mommy. Mm -hmm. Mommy. <laughs> with the cub finally worn out, it was time for bed, with our alarm set for 2.30am for his last feed before he had to be nil by mouth for his procedures. Time to go to Gosh. Thumbs up. Good boy. One overnight stay and one hospital visit. Mental. I'm here, Bobby. For your monkey. The nerves we were feeling this morning were unimaginable. Our life was riding on these results. Teddy's life was riding on these results. The thought of being up at Gosh was bad enough, let alone knowing that knowing that if Teddy relapsed, this would be our new home again. Here goes. Today is the big day, the big tests with big results. Fingers crossed. So tightly. What have you got there? Uh, monkey. Monkey. <laughs> Talking of monkeys, off to safari. The one positive of Teddy's coronavirus is that we get our own room. We're not on a ward, which animals. is lovely, but... Daddy, get your animals. Yeah. Open. Open! The doctor had come in and was happy for the test to go ahead. So we signed the consent form, took another deep breath, and awaited our turn to go down to theatre. 
So we have had the anaesthetic doctor in and the other doctor to sign consent and all looks like it is going to go ahead. They're going to try giving him a medicine because he has to go under gas and air and a general anaesthetic because he hasn't got obviously a port or a can or anything like that. Um, yeah, they're going to try and give him this medicine which helps calm him down before the gas and air as it can be really distressing. So it's the first time of doing that. But um, they, the anaesthetic doctor said hopefully he'll be second on the list today, which is amazing because we thought we'd be last because of his potential coronavirus he's had. So yeah, we just now we wait until they get called down and uh, get him under general anaesthetic and get this procedure done. On your head, Ted. Oh, <laughs> to my dog and my bed. <laughs> They go mad in here. Yeah, it's mad. Sakwa. Like that. Can you do it? Yeah. Shaka. Louder. Shaka. Shaka. You are a superhero, mate. Look at these strong legs. Uh, no, that's not a clever idea. So come on, take me down to theatre so I can go home to my dog. So the anaesthetist said this morning that we were meant to be second on the list and that was around about half past nine. And it's now half past eleven. And uh, we are still here and haven't been to theatre and running on 100% gosh time as always. So uh, but I think the pre-med that he is having, the new one that which we are unfamiliar of, is being prescribed now. So we're going to get him in his gown, get his bum changed. And hopefully it's not too long. This just sums up our whole journey. Teddy is about to go down for the biggest test of his life. He has been starved for 12 hours, but our son, Super Ted, is still happy and 100% clueless about what's to come. Even though you'd think the hospitals, the gowns, the environment would upset him and bring back bad memories, not our superhero of a son. Once again, he just takes it all in his little stride and forever inspires us as parents and humans to be a bit more like Ted. Whereas us as parents, on the other hand, knowing everything that is going on and understand how important these results are for us, for him and our future as the Bridge family. But as always, when walking through the doors of a theatre room, nothing is certain, the risks are there, and 13 months into this journey, it really doesn't get any easier. Teddy had to go under general anaesthetic again via gas and air. As a father, watching him have a mask forced upon his face whilst he fights consciousness absolutely destroys my soul. Being surrounded by four other individuals, watching me break down and having comments from the anaesthetist like wow he really is fighting it, doesn't help in the slightest. It makes me just want to rip him out of their hands and run away, but I know it's for the best and I have to be strong as my son Super Ted. So Teddy is down now and those gas and air sedations are just the worst. I've said it before and I know I'm not going to keep waffling on but they are just the worst. Watching him scream and just squirm and not want to be there and oh, just come in and out of consciousness just literally sends me into oblivion. It really does. There's nothing worse. But um, he's down and he's under and hopefully it's a quick procedure and then he'll be back up. And then all we've got is clinic, and then we can go home, hopefully. And he's had his blood done as well, so they've all been done excellent. Thank you. Keep okay, support his neck. And he's got a little cannula in his foot, just from where they did the blood from. But once he's had a bit to drink, he's probably going to take out a little bit. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. He was back. Our boy had done it. And now we just wait to see what path our life was going to take us down. For now, our life was out of our hands. Now we just got to let him recover, have his observations, finish off our conversation with our consultant, and then um, hopefully observations will all be good and we can go home. But the tests are done. Now we just wait for the results. These next 48 hours are just going to be hellish because it will determine our path of where we're going to go with Teddy. Clinic is all done with our doctor and it all, she was really, really nice. It's a new one and she seemed really calm and cool and collected and seems on it, which is lovely as well. But 
We're just waiting to see if Teddy needs any more observations and then we can get this cannula out his foot and then hopefully head home and head back to Bridge HQ. Teddy, let's go home! Thumbs up! Good boy! We were finally home back at Bridge HQ and putting the cub to bed in the comfort of his own room. The timer had officially started, the 48 hour countdown had begun. Come back on Wednesday where we'll have the results and the answer to the question, has Teddy relapsed or is he still cancer free? From the bottom of our heart, from the Bridge family, we thank you so much for your continued support following our journey and Teddy's road to recovery. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and remember guys, live for today as tomorrow is never promised.